the last place I was working uh, with companies like that was Wisdom Labs. And at Wisdom Labs, we created an app called Why Is It Work? Um, and, um, you know, created a, a bunch of material to help people specifically with mindfulness at work. So it's not a just, it's not a learn mindfulness app. It's a apply mindfulness at work app. And uh, what we found is that, uh, just as you mentioned, it's hard to get people to, it's easy to get them to download an app. It's very hard to get them to use it. The number one thing that people are finding that makes uh, usage go up is having challenges. So all those things you see, like the monthly meditation challenge or whatever, that is effective in getting people to use apps. Um, the big thing that I learned uh, that was surprising in one way and should not have been surprising uh, as apps started to get more popular was um, there's a particular fairly famous app in the marketplace that I was brought in as an advisor for. Um, and I, uh, I was like, look, we, we need to have, make this app actually teach people to meditate, like in a long sequence, learn mindfulness and go deeper and deeper and deeper into mindfulness. And, um, and there was some buy-in on that. And it turns out to not be the way people want to use an app. Uh, and instead, what uh, that app and virtually every every popular one has done is create a specialized guided meditation for every possible situation, as I call it, the you know the cat peed on the rug meditation. You know, it, it, you, to me, it makes no sense. I mean, you want to, which would you rather do? Like learn how to meditate and then apply that to every situation or learn, have a separate guided meditation for every possible situation that could come up in life. It just, that second model, I just don't get it, but that's how people want to use apps. And so to me, it makes them even less useful uh, in, in my mind. And yet that's, that's, uh, because the, the person is not actually learning how to meditate. What's happening is the guided meditation on the app is sort of teaching them to soothe about a particular situation. And of course, there's nothing wrong with helping people to soothe in a particular situation. That's great. But we're kind of doing a disservice by not showing them how to really meditate and to understand the principles of mindfulness and apply them. So very few apps do this. Uh, some of them do, but not the big ones. Um, and, and you'll notice that even the big ones, when they're teaching uh, mindfulness, it's not really what I would call mindfulness. It's more shamatha, right? They're teaching people to basically relax on their breath. Again, it's soothing, and that's great. I'm glad people can get soothed, but that's um, a tiny, tiny fraction of what even basic mindfulness can help someone to achieve with their meditation, you know, how it can really, really positively and powerfully affect their life. I'm from uh, Michigan, and, and, you know, every once in a while I go back there and meet, you know, extended, extended uh, relatives or sort of like not even family members, friends of family members. My family has the difficult job of saying what I do for a living. You know, they have to be like, well, Michael, what do you do again? And I'm like, uh, you know, I'm a meditation teacher. And invariably what Anyone guess what the invariant response is? It's always exactly the same. Any guesses? It is, oh, that's great. I need to relax. Yeah, is um, or there is a second version of that, which is, oh, that's great. I need help going to sleep. 
So it's two, two variations on the exact same idea, which is that it's all about soothing uh, and relaxing like that. So there is a, a huge advantage that somehow everyone out there understands that there's this thing called mindfulness and you can do it and it's worth doing, that's great. On the other hand, everyone's idea seems to be out there in the world that it's simply about relaxing, right? Simply soothing. And um, I guess this is a long, long answer to your question, but it's, it's to, just to say that I think the apps are doing, in general, an extremely poor job of teaching people to meditate. Uh, and they could do a better job. I mean, it's not hard. Uh, uh, for example, the Bright Mind app teaches Shinzen style Vipassana, you know, like hardcore technical mindfulness uh, very well, but it's not popular. Uh, and this is why all the big apps have gone to this mode of simply teaching people to relax because that's what the market wants. Um, and so, yes, I think that um, it's not really about in-person versus Zoom or virtual. It's more about whether Number one, a live human being who understands mindfulness is actually working with you and answering your questions or not. And number two, whether that person is really teaching you mindfulness or is more like teaching you to kind of, you know, chill out only. Um, it's very, very important to me personally. This is just my opinion, but I really uh, like working one-on-one -on -one, uh, with people, or at least being able to answer people's questions individually. Um, I'm at a place where if I give an online course and I were to open up the registration, there would be a large number of people that showed up far more than I could work with one-on-one. -on -one. So when I do online courses, I limit it to like 20 people because that's as many people as I can actually have any kind of real teaching relationship with at, at, at a time. So uh, it's not so much about the platform, you know, whether, because doing this, we can still have a conversation. When I do one-on-one -on -one coaching, um, it's almost always just on the phone. People often want video, but I actually don't do that um, uh, for a whole bunch of reasons. So you'd think that just talking on the phone might be lesser than, but actually, you know, uh, it's very intimate and very, you know, we can really get in there with what's going on. I can really get in there with people deeply, deeply, deeply. And in some ways, I think better than if I'm doing visual and auditory, just auditory alone. Uh, somehow there's a more concentrated experience. Uh, that's just me. But in other words, the, the platform is not as important. What's important is that you have the ability to do, to hear people's questions and to talk to them individually. So, you got me on a rant about apps, so I'm sorry about that. <laughs>